Buenos días, mi gente. Estamos aquí en el bus de RUSEFI. ¿Qué es RUSEFI? RUSEFI es el sistema operativo que corre las Alfa EQ. Todo su código, todas las cosas de CAN son abiertas porque vienen del código de RUSEFI. Y pues yo, igual que muchos otros contribuyentes, le añaden código, eh, maybe hackeamos un CAN boss y se lo integramos. Y aquí tenemos un par de, de las unidades. Aquí están las Alfa EQ que ustedes las han visto. Si siguen mi página ya ustedes saben lo que es. Y si no la siguen, pues... Estas son las Alfa EQ y estas son las hermanas del Alfa EQ que el hombre desarrolla, Mr. Andre, eh, las ha desarrollado para Corbeta, para Nissan, para Miata, un montón de aplicaciones. Aquí tenemos, esto, para enseñarle a la gente, un trotter de Mustang 2020 conectado a una de las hermanas de la Alfa EQ que está hablando por CAN con este sistema iDrive de BMW. Lo pusimos, que cuando tú lo abres aquí, abre el trotter y lo cierra y lo abre y lo cierra. Y le das este botón como si fuera map switching, le das pan y ahora el trotter está más lento y le das otra vez y ahora está más rápido y le das otra vez y ahora está más lento ¡pam! y ahora está más rápido. Y así es como funcionaría el map switching con, por Canvas con un Alpha Echo porque yo escribí el código que hace el map switching y pues eso mismo yo se lo implemento a las Alpha Echo y ahí está y esa es la magia del open source. Aquí también para que veas esto rapidito hay un dash de Requi 8, un dash de Mini Cooper un inyector GDI y un controlador GDI. Eso es porque se está desarrollando control de GDI para toda la familia de los productos, las hermanas del Alfa EQ, la Alfa EQ, quizás, no sé. Y pues aquí hay un, lo que llaman un trigger wheel en inglés, o una rueda, para que la lea el can sensor que está ahí. Y tú si tú das vuelta, dispara el inyector. Facilito, simplecito. Y bueno, esto es, esto es lo que estamos enseñando, enseñando a la gente la magia del open source, que... Para hablar un poquito más del open source, vamos a hablar con el creador, Mr. Andre. Hey, buenos días, amigo Andre, Andre. ¿Qué hay? Mr. Andre, ¿cómo se dice? Velo, 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 No, Velo Mutsky. Velo Andre Velo Andre Velo Sí. Él es el hombre que creó el código principal de Rusefi. Él creó la primera versión y de ahí hemos oído un montón de contribuidores como yo, como varios que han pasado por aquí, que añaden su granito de arena para hacer el código mejor y mejor y mejor. Y pues el hombre, tristemente, tú no hablas mucho español, ¿verdad? No hablo español, no, no sé qué dice. No hablo español, perdona, perdóname. Pero, pues tendremos subtítulos que van a estar por aquí. O maybe más abajo, maybe más arriba, yo no sé dónde están en el frame, pero van a ver subtítulos y le voy a hacer un par de preguntas para que entiendan un poquito más del proyecto de Rusefi. I wanted to ask you, what is RUSEFI and why is it open source? Because open source projects in the ECU community are pretty rare to see. It is. A, it started as a hobby project because I realized that the things I saw they were just not good. I am a very qualified software developer, and as a software developer, I was not impressed with what I saw 10 years ago. And then I realized that STM, those ARM chips, are so amazing, and I realized that something way better could be built. And we actually build a way better thing. At the moment, Rusty is extremely advanced. Being open source is a major advantage. Yeah. I got the contributors of such a caliber, I could not believe I would ever see them. There's a guy who has a Wikipedia page about him. Okay. I googled him, I said, like, that's probably somebody with, his na with your name. He was, <laughs> no, that's me. It's just me. There's a Wikipedia page about me. Okay. And people come, sometimes they then disappear. But before they disappear, they do amazing stuff. Other uh, all, all little contributions are building blocks to make a better and exactly. a better Exactly. Like my job is to just be around over the years and to integrate those pieces because it's one amazing engineer who did the fuel pump control, the high pressure fuel pump control. And it's another amazing engineer who did the injector control. And I made it to work together and I tested on the real vehicle without Scott, without Chris, it wouldn't happen. Without and Matthew, without David, without Jared, without Nick. All Each these. of those people, they contributed something amazing. And I'm just gluing those pieces together. And it's, it's a combination of amazing, which is the most advanced open source that's, ECU. That's, out of like five, six. That's the beauty of open source, that everyone can contribute. Maybe something that they're specified in, they can, they can contribute what they want and then you can make sure it works and then that just yep. keeps get, yep. getting yep. built upon. We have the process, like we have the testing process, it's very mature. We have multiple layers of continuous integration. Like I know how to build software, I know how to accept changes. 
versus not accept changes. We have the standards. We have amazing people who follow the standards and it all clicks together. It's yeah. really just a combination of those pieces. Yeah. And you said that Rust CFI is the most advanced open source project. Correct. Why, why is it the most advanced? Why is it the most advanced? Because the people are amazing. But technologically, the consequence is CAN bus. Very few people can do the CAN bus. CAN bus with Lua integration, it's just the level of flexibility very few commercial ECUs have. Yeah. I can name one extremely expensive commercial ECU where you can get this level of flexibility if you are an authorized dealer. In our case, everyone can have this extreme level of integration. If you feel like you are the, the level needed to write your own code, you can download it, write your own right. stuff in Lua and, and test and it out. And if you use Lua or you use C++, different applications, you would use a different language. Yeah. C++ is the full-blown development lifecycle that's you're contributing something fundamental, uh -huh. but something very niche, very custom just for you. You're not contributing to the community, you're just using Lua as the interpreter. It's a one-time thing. There's no reason for that thing to be in the code base. There's no reason for that thing to be compiled. And, and if you believe that it should be in the code base, you can then publish let us it, know. Exactly. talk to the developers, exactly. and then get that added into the There's code There's a base. library of the examples. We can build the UI later on for the, the real stuff, but Lua is a game changer. CAN bus, yeah, it's just a must have. Without a CAN bus, I don't think you only see you. Yeah. Without electronic file body, I mean, respectfully, it's 2022. It's yeah. like we're three weeks away from and, 2023. And, and, and cars have been using electronic file bodies for 20 years now. 22 years. Yeah. You don't have drive-by wire. You are stuck in the 2000s, I mean. Maybe uh, even earlier. And we're trying to go forward. I mean, throttle body was 20 years ago. Five years ago is now sent. Mm -hmm. That used to be a six uh, sensor uh, throttle body because two wires were analog. Yeah. Now it's a five wire thing because now it's a digital throttle body. Yep. We support both the legacy analog throttle bodies and the new, and the new digital stuff. Yeah. We're starting to play with GDI. Again, I know there's an open source from Australia. He showed us a lot with GDI, but we've integrated it with everything else. The sum is now the greatest. The sum of the pieces is now way bigger than all the pieces individually. Yes. So GDI, it's not ready. I haven't driven on the GDI yet. I, I need to figure out how I'll start driving. I need a manual test mule at the moment. Maybe if there's someone watching that has a GDI something and they feel confident enough to yes. test it out yes. and help yes. us out with the development. Yes. That's, that's the last frontier at the moment. That's the next frontier at the moment. Yeah. We need a GDI test mule, probably manual. Yeah. If you are in northern New Jersey and you have a manual Jetta, definitely let or me know. Or if you're into programming, you know C++, and yes. you somehow have a GDI card that you want to try all this stuff yep, out, yep. you can also get yeah, one. Yeah, like some people have stopped by with diesel. Maybe we'll go into diesel one day. Apparently, that's a very open niche. Think yeah. about it. Think about the million dollar you'll make with diesel. Yeah. Um, uh, no, <laughs> I don't like diesel. I like spark plugs. Spark plugs are okay, nice. Okay, nice. So, yeah, I think, is there anything else you want to tell us about Rust CFI? Where do we find you? All that You cool find stuff. it online. It's rustcfi.com. You find it on AlphaX because it's the heart of them too. Yeah, it's the heart of AlphaX, obviously. AlphaX is the way to go if you want a nice human to talk to because AlphaX is... Shit, he's not... He's a, no, but he hears you. Shit, he's a nice human. He's a nice human. To you want to talk to a nice human? It's Alpha X. <laughs> it's Rossi Fine inside, but you don't really need to know what's inside. Yeah, if Alpha you just X want... is a nicely packaged product, while Rossi Fi is it's it's harder. It's, it's a, really Rossi Fi is mostly a tool set that you can Rossi use. Rossi Fi to... is the framework exactly. Yeah, Rossi Fi and... is the way to build an ECU. We're trying to build those plug-in ECUs. Miata offering by Beer Money is amazing. At the moment, I've been told Beer Money offering for Miata is just the best. Okay. We've got the best idol in the business. Uh, the case is amazing. I am hoping that people would come and we would replicate this Miata Beer Money success with another platform. 350, GM, BMW, you, you tell me. So, yeah, well, thank you for talking to us, Andre. Thank Muchas you for letting gracias. us know. He knows the Spanish, but he's not telling anyone. No, no hablo español. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Dónde? ¿A dónde? 
Mi gente, ya tuvimos nuestra sección en español, ya le dijimos a, 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 adiós al ruso loco, así como yo le llamo, el ruso loco, se fue y se escondió. Pero gracias como siempre por vernos y gracias por siempre el apoyo a nuestros amigos latinoamericanos. Denle like, comenten, suscríbanse. Todos siempre seguimos echando todo para adelante y estamos aquí bregando con todo lo que sea de la fiebre. Así que nos vemos después.